This episode is brought to you by the Solent Sky Museum, preserving aviation heritage for future generations. On tonight's show, we're flying around the world in 200 hours and meet the man behind Wings magazine. Hello and welcome to the Aviators Lounge, a show all about everything to do with historic aviation with me, Andy Jones and Tony Dyer. Joining us tonight is Jack McBride, the editor-in-chief of Wings magazine and a man who's planning to fly 38,000 miles around the world, pilot Johnny Short. And we're tonight broadcasting here from the Solent Sky Museum in Southampton. Now, it's coming to the end of air show season, unfortunately, Tony. It is. What's been the highlight for you for, for air shows this year? Well, to be honest, it's got to be the um, Ultimate Warbirds display that's been going around the show, uh, show scene. Right. Which is um, based out of Cywell, That's think. That's four aircraft, is it? Yeah, that's the... four dissimilar aircraft. So they're single-engined single, single -engined aircraft. There's the... P-47 Thunderbolt, which is one of the biggest single-engine um, aircraft in terms of weight for, uh, for a fighter. Mm -hmm. Then you've got a, a Mustang, and then you've got a Spitfire, and then you've got a Bouchon, which is the Spanish-built 109. All in one display? All in one display. I've seen that. Yes. In a diamond. Great. And it's uh, absolutely gorgeous. Excellent. Well, I ended up at Eastbourne Air Show back in August. Um, I managed to convince the family to go there. And it was, it, was, it was interesting, it was a really good experience because I'm so used to going to air shows on airfields and you get, there's a lot of distraction on the ground, mm. you're looking at something static or you're looking around the stalls and actually just going out to the beach, you can really concentrate yeah. on just watching the flying. And it's funny because it, it's the ultimate warbirds display, isn't it? They, yeah. they, were, they were there displaying then and when they, they peeled off and they get the Spitfire and the Bouchon do a kind of mini dogfight type thing, don't they? Um, at Eastbourne, in the afternoon sun with the English Channel as the background and just watching the Spitfire chasing the Bouchon, if you squinted your eyes for half a second, <laughs> you kind of took yourself and think, God, that must be, it really does look like uh, that could be 1944. Oh yeah. Um, Jack, what's been your best air show experience then? I think this year specifically, Legends, just seeing the Red, uh, the red Arrows before they uh, went off to the States. Mm. Um, it's quite unique, a Warbird air show, to see the Red Arrows, but coming in over the hangars, that was a unique perspective. It's amazing, isn't it? Those Hawks are now 40 years old. Oh, yes, they're, they're, yeah. We worked this out the other day. If you, um, if you went to 1943, when you get the Gloucester Meteor, the first jet aircraft to enter service into the RAF, if you take a 40-year-old aircraft then, it will be a right flyer. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely it, goes, it goes to show you, doesn't it, how, how aviation just went through that bang, that, that first sort of 40 mm. years of from nothing to a jet well, aircraft. The, um, the, the first yeah. uh, pre-production Hawk, um, has just gone to the museum. Yeah, we, 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 we yeah. put some pictures up of that. It was taken in via a Chinook helicopter. Via God's own helicopter, the Chinook. Yeah, it's <laughs> good. Johnny, what's your, your best air show experience? I'm simple. I just like the Typhoon. If it's loud, <laughs> I like it. So, yeah. yeah, seeing the Typhoon a few times this season, it's been great. Um, yeah. I was lucky enough to meet Jim, the pilot, as well, a local oh, flight to help uh, do that we did back in Biggin Hill about two weeks ago. Fantastic guy, fantastic crew. It's loud, I like it. <laughs> yes, yeah, the louder simple. the better. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Sets off lots of car alarms. Yeah, car alarms. It's going to yeah. be good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Jack, Wings Magazine. It's uh, an aviation journal based in the UK, focused on the beauty and adventure of the aviation world and is accompanied by thoughtful and inspiring photography. And we've got a copy here. And I've got to say, this is an absolutely cracking piece of work. Um, Journal versus magazine. Now, when I think about a magazine, I think about walking into sort of WH Smith's and picking up a copy of um, Fly Past or Airplane Monthly or Classic Car or, or Stamp Collecting Weekly, whatever, I, whatever it takes me. But this is, this is beyond that, isn't it? What, what's, where, where did your story start with this, this journal? Oh, well, I mean, any conversation I have is it's either a magazine, a journal, a book. Uh, it, the description kind of varies depending on the person that's picked up, really. Um, we just honestly just want to cover as much as we can within the aviation world. There's one thing that every person within the aviation industry has in a similar kind of a passion for, and that's just aviation full stop. You can go for someone that's interested in flying Spitfires to someone that's interested in flying Typhoons. The whole thing, the underlining key theme is that aviation is the passion. And that's what we're just trying to identify in each story. Well, I, I see it in that because um, there's magazines which are more like comics. You know, you'll look at them 
Um, sorry, I'm not going to be disrespecting some certain magazines, but they are. They're like comics. You read them, you get what we all want from them, and then next week's um, or next month's uh, car boot sale fodder or down to the local whatever. With these, they're rereadable. So they're almost like the, the big coffee table books that you can look at and relook at. There's a series you probably remember, Warbirds Worldwide. Well, Warbirds Worldwide. Right? And that was very much like that, where you've got. I will look at those again. And I think that's what this is. It's a great magazine. And so your, your background, you came from sort of graphic design. Um, I studied architecture for a short while. Right. And kind of picked up design techniques and mm -hmm. styles within, um, within design my architectural portfolio. Um, and was lucky to be studying in Norwich. It has beautiful independent bookstores. And I was picking up travel magazines, uh, ones that focused on food, uh, and was finding just the whole print is dead to be completely false and there's some beautiful publications out there and I just thought aviation needed one. Good stuff. Yeah. So uh, from your architectural sort of background and your architectural eye, how do you, how do you, how do you see aircraft in that, in that same? Because interesting, when an architect sits down and designs a building, they're looking aesthetically at what that's going to be. When an aircraft designer sits down and designs an aeroplane, they don't think about how beautiful those lines are going to be. They're looking for like, the ultimate streamlined or aerodynamic shapes. And yet, in aviation, you get these wonderful aircraft, like the Spitfire, for example. And so it, is that something that appeals to you and how you see that comparison? Definitely. I mean, if you look at the work that RJ Mitchell was putting into some of the aircraft he was doing, um, and then you compare that to Norman Foster, mm -hmm. who designs 30 St. Mary Axe, the, um, the Gherkin, Wembley Stadium, mm -hmm. all these kind of buildings and kind of just minute details that kind of make it aerodynamic and stuff like that. That's, you can see similar links, mm -hmm. definitely. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. So how do we get hold of the magazine? Is it, because uh, this is uh, available via the website? Yes, you can buy it through our, our, <coughs> sorry, our website, which is uh, wingsmag.co.uk, but we have stockists across the world. Great, it's excellent. Really, really and the second, uh, second edition's out at the moment, and I was flicking through this the other. Somebody's saying there's a, there's a crop duster in here, is that, is that right? Yes, yeah, towards the front, with mm. um, beautiful photography from James Campbell out in Australia. All oh, right, yes. Mm. That's the whole thing, isn't it, about aviation? Johnny, you were talking about this because we were talking about flying boats earlier and this whole adventure of aviation, mm. isn't it? That yeah. is kind of, and I love seeing those, those far off places with these working aircraft. Still uh, spraying fields. And, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great, excellent. Right, moving on, Johnny. Um, the Seven Continents STEM Challenge. That will begin in late July 2020. Over 38,000 nautical miles to be flown, 30 plus countries to be visited. Yep. Along the way, you're going to carry out a number of outreach events at local schools Indeed. to raise the awareness of general aviation and STEM and their importance to the future of aviation. Now, if I go back to my school, and I think when I was at, uh, at my school days, and um, uh, you know, I think what I was told in, in, in design technology, it was basically to make a, a bird a, a birdhouse out yeah. of a plank of wood. In fact, I got one of my friends successfully spent six weeks just making a plank of wood. That's as far <laughs> as he got was just just literally planing it down. It down. Planing, yeah. yeah. Ste um, education to me now seems quite more vibrant. STEM. Where does this all come from? Where does this well, well, science, yeah. technology, engineering, and mathematics is something that the government is pushing quite a lot at the moment. Um, the UK especially has a huge deficit in regards to these trained graduates that are going to come through and pick up not only in aviation but in other areas of design, technology like you were just mentioning. Um, and they're looking at outsourcing and bringing people in from across the waters to, to really fulfil jobs that realistically if we had the right grounding, the, the students that we have and we're nourishing through our school and education system could fulfil now. Mm. Interesting. And Tony, this is right. Your, your, your day job as a flight engineer, uh, flight test engineer. Yep. Your, um, yeah, this is, how did you get on that path back in whenever it was? Um, 18, uh, sorry, 1980. Well, my dad wanted me, me to be a doctor, but I don't like blood. So that wasn't going to happen. And then, uh, then I was going to be a chemical engineer, but that looked boring. And uh, I never really wanted to mix. So I've always been an aviation holic, and I uh, really didn't want to mix uh, business with pleasure. Mm. But after going to a chemical engineering plant, not a million miles away from here, and seeing someone like Homer Simpson, very, very bored, yeah. eating a donut, and I asked him, you, what, what was his job, and did he go and do chemical engineering? And he said yes. I thought, rip up my UCA form, and went and did um, aero engineering. Right. 
and I just got into it. And uh, you know, I'm very lucky. I, I work at a place which uh, I, well, today is my thir end of my 32nd year at the same place, and uh, we have a very big STEM um, uh, program, and it's very good and it's encouraging lots of people into a a aviation, a aeronautical engineering, and things like that that wouldn't normally. May you, not normally yeah, be. You, you definitely need a pathway. There's a huge deficit mm. in, in regards to people think that aviation is this industry where you have to be rich or you have to come mm. from a certain ethnic background or you know you've got you've, mm. you've got to have certain things in place before you can actually join I, the, the aviation. But it's not true. No, it's not. And I, I I I think it's a very rewarding career and I love it. Um, the one sad thing I think is that um, it's not seen by the public in as high a regard as it should. Um, so you know in Europe engineers are seen as not, not quite doctors but they are seen as professional engineers yeah exactly. whereas in in this country if you say oh what do you do um, I'm an engineer you, you, you and the person who comes and fixes your washing machine while a laudable thing that is an engineer mm -hmm. and yeah. and it's 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 quite sad so uh, it'd be nice to see them recognized a bit more I think personally I think I, I think young people get a bit uh, get a bit of a knock these days, because you know, time and time again, you hear people there's a trouble with the youth these days and all this kind no of stuff. Focus. No <laughs> focus. But I see, actually, I see. If you look around, there are a lot of young guys involved in young, young guys and young girls yes. um, involved with lots of things um, in aviation, especially. And what staggers me, actually, and something you and me were talking about, Tony, when we were, when we were at Legends, mm. is the amount of young people coming up actually involved in, in classic aviation and restoration oh. projects oh, and yeah. stuff. And Massive, yeah. you get this sort of, you think about, you know, sort of some, you know, sort of some of these restoration companies are men with beards slowly putting rivets into uh, yeah. and smoking a pipe. And actually, no, it's oh, not yeah. at all. You, oh, you know this, Jack, don't you? Because you're, you're with some of these articles you've covered. Yeah, so I just think specifically the work that the aircraft restoration company at Ducks would do, mm. to, you know, they're heavily looking for uh, apprenticeships and stuff yep. like that. So. Yeah. The, the space is out there, yeah. it's just kind of starting at a younger age yeah. and kind of mm. driving them towards that. And I think it's very important um, that, that it is open to everybody. And, um, you know, there are, where I work, there are lots of ladies that work there and it's brilliant. And there should be, um, but you're up against a lot of, um, a lot of decades of people say, oh, you don't want to do that, that's a man's job. And it just is not. Yeah. Historically, that's the way it's always Which been. Is, there's, a, yeah. there's a huge which is crazy. Diversity difference mm. between women and, and men in, in aviation especially. I think as well mm. for me, going back, if I go back to when I was at school, I, you know, we, we all wanted to be fighter pilots. And the hurdles that are in front of you with that, sort of at, at, at 11 you want to be a fighter pilot. At 12 you think, okay, well, I'll just take flying. And then by the time you get to 13, you've been, given, you've been told so many hurdles, yeah. you can't do that, yeah. you can't do this, you can't do that. Yeah. And, uh, by, and yeah. so by 14, you're just happy to just go and loaf yeah. around and just given up on it. And it happened to me. Um, I kind of like, well, I'll start looking in, in different directions. Mm. And it's that encouragement that's needed at that, yeah. that, that young age. Exactly. When you're, when, you're, when you're born, you're a blank canvas. And all you spend as you get older is your time closing doors. And the more doors that remain open to you, I think is, is so important. So STEM is fantastic. The, the all-party parliamentary group for general aviation have got a STEM working group, which I'm a part of, and they're all about getting in there, breaking down the stigmas to do yeah. with getting into aviation. STEM, it's not a boring subject, it's yeah. the future. Mm. I mean, if you can get into it, the doors that can open up, and as long as you know the clear pathways to get in, yeah. which there are plenty, yep. and there's always people around to help out and guide you, that, then it's a fantastic industry to get into. Mm. So talking about the flight then, how, how are you going with flight planning? And, and flight what planning is going well, yeah. yeah. At the moment we've provisionally got a, uh, our, our track in place. Uh, we're going to be heading east. We'll be leaving July, or late July 2020. Uh, and then, like I say, we'll be heading east uh, around the world. But we've kind of got a few different points where we're going to be stopping off already. We're going to be joining uh, a university in Lebanon for a discussion there. We've got some discussions in Australia. Uh, heading to Phoenix, Arizona to talk to um, CAE, the flight school out there. Right. So there, we've got quite a lot of stop-offs. The, the route's a bit fluid at the moment because it mm. keeps changing with the more and more commitments that we're getting. Um, the most important part for me anyway is, is to basically promote it and STEM as much as we can yep. and show people how important STEM education and general aviation is, not only for, for, for a community but also for a, for a, a population as well. Mm. I've got to ask you, what aircraft are you flying in? Cirrus SR-22. Very nice. 
good stuff. Not choice. too bad. Can't take a Spitfire. They've already done that. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to go. One, have to go one better. It's already got beaten. On yeah, that yeah. Or something <laughs> really, really sort of odd. Yes. Well, yeah, you could have taken yeah. a two seater and taken me with taken you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting yeah. balance then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 the jibe. Yes. yes. We've already spoken about that. Actually, <laughs> it's something we refer to as the Spitfire diet. That I've noticed that. <laughs> the various, uh, all these flight experiences which are coming up, you can fly in the back of this, you can fly in the back of that. And the majority of people are doing this are middle-aged men and most of them have got to lose at least a stone to go <laughs> on. So we're going to come up with this, yeah. this, this feature of the, uh, the Spitfire diet. It could diet. be the new diet. Yeah. Yeah. It's either that or uh, do it in nude. Which they, they well, weren't keen they weren't on. Doing, they weren't There's more the space in the Sea Fury. So <laughs> yeah, you get yourself to the aerial so, yeah. of Duxford. Yeah. Well, get I, did, I, did have, I my, my I think it was my one of my birthdays. A friend of mine decided to buy me a, a microlight flight with one of the Icarus ones, and we went and knocked on the door. And the guy looked at me and he said, I think before we do anything, you better stand on the scales. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's not happening. I know, it was happy birthday. I was like, OK, yeah, we're very, very dejected. All right, well, the focus of what we do on this show is, is about historic aviation. But I was keen, John, Johnny, when you, um, when, to get you on, actually, because there's a real link between what you're doing and some of the early aviation pioneers. And I'm thinking about people like um, Bert Hinkler, um, Alan Cobham, of course, Amelia Earhart, all these people who were going out and doing these, these, sort of, these proving flights in yeah. the 1920s mm. and 30s. Um, and I, it was interesting because I, I started to look at Alan Cobham and in particularly one of his um, trips, which was through Africa in, in the flying boat. Um, and the reason was to go and survey Africa mm -hmm. and go and find out where there were reason reasonable um, areas to land, be able to operate from. Um, but also, and he says quite openly in, in one of his books, it was to stimulate public interest in aviation. Mm -hmm. And exactly, that was, yeah. the, uh, you know, that was the whole thing about getting, you know, this was the future. So Bringing aviation to the public. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, he came back, was it his Australian flight he landed? Uh, by the Houses of Parliament. Parliament yeah, 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 he came in, landed up by the Houses of Parliament, and, and there was an excess of like 750,000 people came yeah. out to see him land outside the Houses of Parliament. I don't think I'll yeah. get that amount of people. <laughs> I was going to say, you, know. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't actually land outside the Houses of Parliament now because uh, for fear of waking the MPs up, I think. Well, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Right. Now, how do we follow your story and what, how do we follow what's going on? You can follow us online. Our website is uh, www.stemflyer.com. Also right. uh, on Instagram, uh, Twitter, we'll be yeah. doing daily feeds when I'm flying uh, and also through some of our affiliates, Royal Aeronautical Society, All Party Parliamentary Group for General Aviation uh, and STEM Learning UK. Right. So they'll all be posting little ventures and, and my vlogs while I'm traveling around. So yeah, you can follow me and sponsor us on that website as well. Good stuff. Jack, when's um, uh, volume three coming out from Wings? So we're going to try and hit spring, summer. Yeah. So hopefully you'll see us on air show early next year. Oh, good stuff. Have you got any exciting articles lined up mm. or is it all, is it all top secret? Um, <laughs> if, you're, <laughs> if, you're into the, if you're in the aviation world, you probably have seen a few things on the headlines uh, and a few of those are something we're looking at at the moment. Great. That's all I'll say. Good stuff. Aviation Brilliant. world is a bit, it can, you know, things happen, so. Yes, yeah, yeah. Have to be adaptable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Excellent, great. Well, we're going to have to wrap things up there. Um, can I thank Johnny Short and all the best for your, your, for your flight next thank year? You very much. And yeah. keep in touch with I us. We wanna, we gentlemen, will, yeah. Where are you flying from, do you know? Uh, yeah, hopefully launching from Farnborough. Oh, OK. Uh, well, we'll come up and wave yeah. some handkerchiefs. Come up and wave some some yeah. Teary <laughs> yeah, teary handkerchiefs. Yeah, teary handkerchiefs. I want to see tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we'll, we'll, we'll touch base throughout the trip. Hopefully, we'll give, you up to give you some updates. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. Excellent. Great, great, great. Good stuff. And thank you, Jack, for coming on. What's the website again for, for Wings Magazine? Wingsmag.co.uk. Lovely, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Right, well, as always, if you've got any stories of interest, then please do get in touch with us. And obviously, subscribe to this podcast and channel. Thank you and goodbye. This episode was brought to you by the Solent Sky Museum, preserving aviation heritage for future generations.